Uh, welcome back to uh, Sunday Brunch. We're live. Simon. Yes, Tim. Who's your favourite serial killer? <laughs> I'd probably go for Dexter. Ah, oh, fictional one. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, I think we should speak to uh, uh, Michael C. Hall because he's what, uh, not Dexter himself. Dexter himself. Yeah, we've crossed life to. You would think LA, but we're actually going to Bristol. <laughs> uh, good morning, Michael. Morning, How Michael. are you? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. How's how's um, sunny Bristol? You know, I am actually looking at a clear blue sky at the moment, so it is actually sunny and uh, it's fantastic. We played our first uh, first ever gig uh, outside of New York City last night here in Bristol. We're going to talk all about that um, in a minute, but let, let, let's start by just um, talking about Dexter, because because Dexter's back. You've had a bit of time off. Was, why was the time right to bring Dexter back now? Well, I think the possibility of coming back was always there for us. Um, the show ended in a way that was um, very open-ended for the character and also profoundly dissatisfying for some of the viewers. So finally a story emerged that we felt was worth telling. I think the time was right in this case because our season very much centers around the relationship between Dexter and his son. And he's now grown up. We had to wait for him to grow up. It took about eight years to... <laughs> grow him into a teenager so that they can um, face off eye to eye and deal with all the resentment and unanswered questions. But with something with, some, some, with a character like Dexter that you obviously you, you know you have to engross yourself in, is it nice being back as that character as an actor? Yeah, you know, Clancy Brown, an actor who I who I worked with on the show, um, asked me if it was strange to come back, and I. I had to admit that it was it was weird, but the weirdest part was um, how weird it didn't feel. Um, he was still very much there, very much available, and um, it felt very nice alive. You could, it felt very nice you could drop straight back into being a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was somewhat alarming, to be honest. <laughs> uh, we've got a we've got a bit of the trailer here, so let's have a look. This is my life, a wolf among sheep. Was that last kid? People don't just disappear. There's always a reason. If she's right, how many other victims are there? Have you learned nothing? I might still be a monster, but I'm an evolving monster. Oh. Exciting stuff. Right, you're in Bristol because you're, uh, you've got yourself in a band. Um, uh, Princess goes to the uh, uh, Butterfly uh, Museum. T tell us about your band. Well, uh, the three of us met, uh, we're a trio, um, through uh, the Broadway musical Hedwig and the Angry Inch on Broadway. Uh, Matt and Peter, uh, the other band members, started making some music when they fe finished the tour, instrumental tracks, some of which I heard, I casually offered to sing on them just for fun. And the next thing we knew, we had um, written 10 songs without really formally deciding we wanted to be a band, but because we had the songs, we decided to book a gig, and because we booked a gig, we decided we needed a name, and uh, Matt Katz Bowen's daughter, Anna, actually uh, told him that she was thinking about starting a band, and he told him that she was going to call it Princess Goes to the Butterfly Museum, and she gifted it to us, and we took that name. Somehow, it encapsulated or managed to... Uh, Howls all the music we were making. So, um, Michael, you have to we tell us how you have to tell us how old his daughter is. Five. Should we have a listen to the music? And you can tell us all about the music. Should we have a listen to it? Here you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So how quickly did it all come together from you starting out and rehearsing and, and actually getting um, the album out? Um, I mean, we've been we've been up to it for uh, a little over three years. Um, we released an EP, and then um, when the pandemic hit, we we uh, had planned to go out to LA and uh, do some shows there, do some recording there, but um, all of that got canceled. 
and we realized that we had plenty of material to, to craft a full-length record, so we we continued to write. We, we finished some songs remotely, and uh, and yeah, we put we put the full length together, released it in February, and um, I would say the pandemic was very much a catalyst for for um, us deciding to release uh, what we did when we did. Have you been in bands before, Mike? I I I, I haven't. Um, I I've been doing a lot of singing my whole life since I was a first soprano in the boys choir, and. Um, certainly done some singing professionally as an actor. I was in um, Broadway production of Cabaret and Chicago and Hedwig and the Angry Inch, and I did um, Lazarus, the David Bowie musical. Um, and uh, I don't know, in hindsight, it seems like everything was leading to this, but it wasn't um, anything I had consciously planned. Though as a music fan, I think, you know, you always fantasize about fronting a band or being in a band. And, um, Is it as good as it feels? Yeah, yeah, it's a blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you love it. Okay, that's fantastic. And what's happening with the pandemic now? Are you able to, because you're doing Europe, aren't you? Are you able to travel around the rest of Europe? Yeah, well, sadly, we had to uh, cut short the tour and postpone the dates that we had in um, Kiev, Ukraine, and Germany because of all that's going on there. But uh, we, we, are, we are still... Um, completing our dates in the UK and Ireland. Okay, thank you so much for joining us this thanks, morning. Thanks, Michael, good to uh, speak to you. Michael, your album, thanks for coming, is out now. And tickets for your uh, European tour are uh, also available. Bands called Princess Goes to the Butterfly Museum. Best of luck. with I think of Nottingham tonight, aren't you? That's right, that's right. Well, well, it never, it, right now. it never rains in Nottingham, so there you go. <laughs> uh, in a moment, we'll be speaking um, to Mark. Uh, but first, we need to get ourselves over there. Uh -oh, so we can we're go, walking. Thank you, Mike.